right, good afternoon. My name is Christopher Svitek. Uh, we're gonna be doing our Aero 3110 final project presentation today. I'm one of four group members that worked on this and I'm gonna get us started off here. So the main topic that we're focusing on is the Samara seed and studying how it, uh, how it falls vertically and determining what affects its descent time. So like I said, what's a Samara seed? So it's a dry one seeded fruit with a very heavy um, in terms of its entire size, a very heavy seed on one end and a very thin airfoil-like wing on the other. And it's also known as an auto-rotating device or more formally a helicopter seed due to the path it takes downward and the rotation that it does as it travels downward. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at how does auto-rotation produce lift. So auto-rotation is kind of the main topic of discussion here. And we found out during our testing that the seed really goes through three different phases of uh, flight or falling. It takes some time for the weight of the seed to catch itself, to stabilize, and then it enters into a um, very smooth, uh, almost helicopter-like descent uh, pattern. So we determined that lift is produced by turning the incoming flow. And it also was discussed in our experiment section that when the lift is turned, thrust is produced in the opposite direction, um, as you can see in this graphic to the right. So Samara seeds, additionally, they have these unique traits called vascular bundles, and they're these very thin, almost vein-like structures that you see on the wing section. Uh, ultimately, what they do for the flight of the seed is they increase turbulence, which also just adds more energy into the flight of the seed. And that was a, uh, a cool feature we found um, of that seed. So the purpose of the project was to derive a closed form equation for the descent time of the Samara seed, as well as determine what factors are gonna have a direct effect on the descent time of a Samara seed. So um, we had to really look into the methodology of finding out uh, these methods. So we applied a lot of things that we learned in class, including Buckingham Pie, which ultimately um, gave us six different pie products and Garrison is gonna do an in-depth review of those. <clears throat> we also conducted an analysis of the conservation of momentum, which proved to be uh, the most difficult part of the experiment and Cody's gonna go into depth with that. And then we did obviously our testing phase, which we compared five actual Samara seeds to two bio-inspired paper models and we found some unique differences throughout our testing. Lastly, we just made comparisons overall, and really at the end of the day, we had to uh, bounce back to our pie products to really make a comparison and figure out what affected the descent time of the seed the most. Hi, my name is Garrison Walker. I'm gonna explain the Buckingham Pie Theorem for this uh, project. Uh, Buckingham Pie Theorem is a method of using dimensional variables to find non-dimensional parameters. Um, for this project in particular with the Samara seeds, the different dimensional parameters consist of cord length, radius, mass, angular velocity, free stream velocity, free stream density, dynamic viscosity, and height. So these are the fundamental dimensions that we have with the units and the MLT versions. Um, for cord length, the units are millimeters, which means that the MLT version is just a length, so L to the front one. Um, originally, we performed a, the analysis multiple times. However, in the end, we took out angle of attack and we ended up adding um, radius and uh, mass and angular velocity to the mix. Um, our fundamental dimensions that we chose were the mass of the seed, the height that it fell, and the angular velocity um, for the fundamental dimensions. Uh, before solving for pi, uh, we were uh, written as functions of the mass, height, and uh, velocity. Um, this is the expanded version of the MLT and we had to solve for the x, y, and z components um, in, with a system of equations. Um, then, uh, pi, for example, like pi 2 is chord over height that it descended, and um, pi 1 is our uh, time non-dimensional time parameter. Um, our hypothesis for this experiment 
was that the dimensions of the seed do not have any effect on the um, descent time. Uh, even even with a change in surface area, mass, and cord length. Hi, my name is Cody Willingham, and I will be presenting the conservation momentum that we did. So, as you can see from our control volume that we um, that we visualize, is it's a snapshot in time of the area, and this is how we model it: the the descent velocity with the velocity coming out. These are our assumptions, and I will get back to those whenever. We, whenever I start presenting the equations. So we start with a simple kinematic equation, something you would learn in physics. Um, your time of descent is whatever length you have divided by your velocity you're traveling at. Next, we will go to our conservation of momentum equation. And so applying our assumptions, we have equal pressure distribution that would cut that out, no body forces, no viscous forces. And it's also steady state through the time derivative goes away. So this leaves us with this, and what is Fy? Fy is our thrust vector, so our thrust would be pointing up, and so you can model it as a negative mg, because in a steady state solution, your thrust vector and your um, gravity, your mass of gravity, will be the same. And so next, you can expand this out into this, and something to note is if you do a conservation of mass, your time derivative would go away, leaving you with your mass flow in would equal your mass flow out. So it would give us this. Next, we would move on to our energy and apply the exact same assumptions. So, except the only thing you would add is the this adiabatic. So all your Qs in this term would go away. And so canceling everything out, it would give us this. And something you can see by this is your work in would equal your work out. And so rearranging that, your M, from earlier, your mass flow is your m dot in equals m dot out. And so you could get this term by rearranging that. And so next, we need to solve for V infinity. And so what we do is we take our energy equation and we solve for V2 because we have too many unknowns. And then we take that and then we apply it into our conservation of momentum that we found earlier. And what we would get from that is this. And then using a little bit of algebra to make it easier to code, we took the M dot out. Something to denote is that the S term here replaces the A, call that the surface area. And so using MATLAB, all we did was iterate over um, a few billion steps um, in this equation to test a, starting at zero, test a V infinity that would make this left side equal this right side. And whenever you get a, time, a descent velocity from that, plug it into a, the kinematic equation from earlier, and you can tabulate all your descent times. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chloe Forbes, and I will be discussing the experiment and the experimental data. So we did our experiment in the Brown Copal Student Achievement Center, where we dropped five seeds and two bio-inspired autorotating devices from a height of 10 and a half feet. But before we performed the experiment, we took the cord length and the radius with electronic calipers, and we measured the mass inside of a closed scale so that we could dissipate any type of outside effects. So one group member was designated as the dropper, while one other group member was designated as the timer. And this was to get rid of any discrepancies in the data, keep them as consistent as possible. One thing to note is that we recorded every single drop in slow motion so that we could go back and count the rotations per second to calculate our angular velocity. So moving on, this is our experimental data that we got from all of our drop um, times as well as what we measure. So then we went on to calculate our pi products. So just a reminder, this is what our pi products were when we calculated them from the Buckingham pi analysis. Another thing to remember is that pi 1 is our dimensionless time. So in order to get these, we needed the velocity, which we got from taking the descent height and dividing that by the descent time. And then we got our angular velocity by taking the slow motion videos and counting every single rotation for the bio inspired device, as well as the actual seed. So every time it came to the left, we counted 1. And then to put these in radians, we multiplied them by 2 pi. Then we plugged all of these back into our pi product formulas and we were able to get this chart with all of our pi products. So then comparing them, we graphed everything against our dimensionless time, which is pi 1. So pi 1 versus pi 2, we were able to notice that it was consistent in the Samarasi and the bio-inspired device that there was a decreasing relationship between pi 2 and pi 1. Pi 2 versus pi 1, for these though, it could be considered a linear or a quadratic slope, but we would need more data to be sure. For pi 3 versus pi 1, same thing's happening. The data relationship between the Samara seed and the bio-inspired device is very similar. As pi 3 increased, pi 1 seemed to decrease. This could be quadratic or linear, but we need more data. For pi 4, 
it was the exact opposite. This Samara C graph seems to have a decreasing relationship while the bio-inspired device has an increasing relationship. For Pi 5 versus Pi 1, it seems to have an increasing relationship as well as the bio-inspired device has an increasing relationship. And for Pi 6 versus Pi 1, the Samara C has a decreasing, decreasing relationship while the bio-inspired device has an increasing relationship. So taking our experimental times that we had, averaging them together to get these, and then taking our theoretical times that we plugged into the MATLAB code that was mentioned earlier before, we can notice that the seed times that the, for the theoretical were actually less than, but for the larger devices, our theoretical times were greater than. Thank you. During this experiment, there are many errors that can occur. One of them being a controlled environment. We did this in Brown Copal, so there's less wind, but the HVAC system can still affect the flight of the Samara seed. Another one is precise starting and stopping of the stopwatch. Pressing the start at the same time is hard. Another one is a visual physical delay um, with dropping it and pressing the stopwatch at the same time. Another one could be sticky hands due to uh, sweating. Um, when you drop it, it could stick to your fingers. Um, and the other one is seed measurements, which when you put it in a caliper, it's hard to get the correct measurements because it might crush the seed. Um, the revised hypothesis and conclusion is that the angular velocity um, had the greatest effect on the descent time, while the, uh, the faster the seed is spinning, the more lift that is produced by the auto rotation. Um, the bio-inspired devices did not yield the same result as the seeds uh, due to the difference in the wings where the auto-rotating the auto device had two and the seeds only had one. Uh, to produce more accurate and effective results, we had to do a lot more trials.